Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to perform Active Directory enumeration. And uh, this is going to be part of the post-exploitation video series. Um, so again, I know that I haven't covered Active Directory exploitation yet, but this is, a, this is going to be quite useful and quite important when, we, uh, when we'll actually move on to Active Directory exploitation. Uh, and we're going to be leveraging or utilizing the Try Hack Me Room Post Exploitation Basics, which is a free room. And in the previous video in this series, we actually, uh, you know, took a look at how to perform local enumeration on a Windows target. In that, we actually, uh, you know, took a look at the various tools and utilities that you can utilize. And I'm talking about inbuilt Windows utilities uh, that you can utilize to enumerate information that's pertinent to, uh, you know, further exploitation of the target network. And in this case, we know it is an Active Directory uh, environment or an Active Directory um, network. And secondly, you know, how to enumerate information that's pertinent to privilege escalation or th that can actually help you stage an attack. So now that we've done that, uh, we're going to be taking a look at how to perform enumeration with PowerView, right? So PowerView is a PowerShell script uh, that's part of the... Um, it's part of the PowerUp suite of tools. And uh, again, the advantage with using PowerShell scripts is that number one, they run in memory, and number two, they're really simple to execute, and the nomenclature or the syntax is fairly sim uh, simple, or uh, you know, it's it's really very easy to get a hold of the syntax that you need to to use to enumerate, uh, you know, various aspects or uh, various elements of information. That being said, as you can see here, PowerView is a powerful a PowerShell script uh, from PowerShell Empire that can be used for enumerating a domain after you've already gained a shell in the system. So you need to have access to the target system, primarily because you will need to bypass the execution policy, the PowerShell execution policy, and that requires uh, elevated access or you know, administrative uh, privileges. Um, that being said, uh, the, Power, um, the PowerView PowerShell script has al already been downloaded on the target. And uh, all we need to do firstly is to bypass the execution policy there. So I've already logged into the target. And uh, you can see uh, we pretty much have access to the administrator uh, user folder here. And we can head over into uh, downloads. Um, well, not documents, but um, downloads. There we are. And within the downloads folder, you should have the PowerView partial script here. We also have the Bloodhound script as well as the Mimikatz executable. We'll be taking a look at all of these in their own videos and how we can utilize them you know, uh, for, for uh, post-exploitation. Um, right. All right. So now that that is done, we can essentially uh, bypass uh, the PowerShell execution policy. As you can see, we have a PowerShell session now, and that can be identified with the PS option there. And uh, what we need to do now is we can actually um, enable the Power uh, the PowerView script. Um, let me just type that in correctly. PowerView.ps1. There we are. And we shouldn't get an error. And now we have it ready to go, and we can begin executing PowerView. Uh, commands. So, uh, in regards to the um, to the challenges here, we'll get to that at the end. And the reason for that is because I actually want to cover quite a bit, um, you know, in terms of how to use PowerView for enumerating or gathering information in a an Active Directory environment. Now, it provides you the cheat sheet here that is, you know, to be fairly honest, quite advanced for any beginner to uh, for anyone who is new to Active Directory. And uh, you can check it out for yourself and you can learn more or you can, you know, get a better idea of how this works. In my case, we'll be focusing on, you know, uh, all of the, you know, all of the important uh, commands that you need to know in order to uh, essentially get a grip of the environment you're working on or that uh, the environment that you're working in. So I'll be going through this systematically. The first thing we can do, of course, is enumerate user accounts on the target system. And of course, that can be done by saying uh, get net user. And of course, this really isn't that important uh, because we can do it this we can do this manually, right? But in this case, you can see uh, it uh, displaying information not only pertinent to the user account on the target system, but information pertinent uh, to the Active Directory configuration or the Active Directory environment. So, for example, the ADS path, uh, you can see that there, as well as other you know uh, diagnostic information like the last uh, the last time this user logged on, uh, the bad password count. Uh, the object SID, which again is very important. And if you're familiar with Windows security and Windows accounts, um, for example, if I can find a, um, an account here with the uh, SID uh, that contains 500, 
Um, let me see if I can find that here. That's going to be obviously the administrator account. Um, so all of this information is very, very useful. So let me just scroll to the top because I'm guessing the administrator user is going to be at the top. There we are. So you can see that this is the administrator account. And of course, we know that from the SID. And um, again, you can get various uh, bits of information regarding this particular user account and its, um, and its configuration within the Active Directory environment. So for example, member of, this is going to be the, um, the, the groups that this user is a member of. And um, you can see these are the common names for the group. So, you know, group policy creator owners. Um, and then, of course, uh, if we take a look at uh, the other groups here, you can see we have domain admins, et cetera, et cetera, enterprise admins, uh, so on and so forth, right? And of course, we have a, a list of other users. Now, uh, all of this information might be quite uh, comprehensive or, you know, it really could be uh, quite difficult to read this output. So, uh, we can utilize the, these fields here or these pieces of uh, information here uh, to essentially limit uh, the output to the information that we're interested in. For example, I can say uh, limit the results to only the common name of the user accounts. And to do that, I can simply say uh, get net user and then I can pipe it and say select and then maybe the common name. So the common name will essentially just print out the username itself. So if I hit enter, you can see it prints out the common names for the user accounts. And in this case, uh, we have administrator, guest, uh, KRB, TGT, machine one, machine two. That's very interesting. We'll get to that in a second. Admin two, SQL service. And then we have this uh, here, which appears to be a flag, which we'll get to in a second. And then of course we have the SSH um, user account or rather the service account, if you will. Uh, we can also, uh, again, limit it to other pieces of information or, you know, essentially modify our, our output. So again, if we wanted to uh, also display the object SID, we can do that as well. So you can say object uh, SID, I hit enter, and it now will display the SIDs uh, for these, uh, these user accounts printed out here, which again can be, uh, can be very helpful. So again, you can add as many uh, as many fields uh, that you want to utilize with your filter. So for example, again, if we just go through one more example here, uh, we can also add uh, maybe uh, the ADS path if we want. So uh, again, to do that, we simply say uh, ADS path. And of course, this is a comma separated list. Um, so uh, ADS path, and you now get the ADS path there. And uh, yeah, so that is very, very useful. Um, if you want to enumerate more information about a particular user, um, let's see, uh, maybe this particular user here, maybe admin2, I like using admin2. Uh, so get, uh, we can say get net user, and then we specify the username. So we say username, and then we specify the username itself, which in this case is going to be admin2. We hit enter, and then it just displays the information for that particular user, right? So for example, uh, the, the, uh, the groups this user is a, uh, a member of, uh, when they last logged on, and you know all the relevant information that's uh, you know that that's quite important um, you know in regards to an active directory environment so you know you have the domain controller the ads path uh, the object guid or group user id so on and so forth right so that is user enumeration which is you know fairly simple but um there you go uh, when it comes down to listing out groups uh, we can say uh, you know get um, net group and uh, we can then hit enter and this will display a list of all the groups part of this particular domain. And uh, you can see you have uh, administrators, users, guests, print operators, backup operators, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You get the idea. We have uh, tons of groups for uh, that actually fulfill various purposes or, uh, you know, various pieces of functionality. They may be service groups, you know, uh, that essentially allot or assign specific privileges to users. Uh, for example, as I mentioned in the previous video, the RDP uh, user group, so uh, remote, uh, if I can actually find that here, uh, the remote uh, desktop uh, or RDP group, um, and again, uh, you know, I don't need to actually find it here, but uh, again, you get the idea. Now, if we wanted to uh, enumerate information for our particular domain, right, and um, I'll get to domain enumeration shortly, uh, but uh, for example, we can say, uh, you know, get uh, net um, net group, and then we can limit this to a domain. So in our case, um, I'm pretty sure the domain is controller uh, dot local, 
right and we hit enter and these are the groups that are part of this particular domain so we you know uh, similar to the previous command but in this case we're limiting it to this particular domain and that's very important as we'll move on with active directory exploitation we'll be you know taking a look at domains forests etc and uh, how uh, you know you can essentially move between uh, one or you can essentially enumerate information on one uh, as opposed to all of them or the, the current domain that you're currently working on right now this is um, this is very important right uh, what if we wanted to enumerate or to find out uh, how many admin groups we have well we can do that by saying uh, get net group and then we can say admin count so you know we can say admin count um sorry let me just type that in correctly admin count and uh, i typed that in correctly this is not net gpo uh, we'll talk about uh, group policies in a few seconds but uh, in a few seconds but we say uh, net group uh, admin count and these are the groups that are essentially admin groups right and from this you can pretty much tell why they are admin groups so administrators print operators backup operators domain controllers enterprise admins domain admins key admins etc right all right so that's fairly simple uh, that information can be very useful when trying to identify specific groups uh, with specific privileges right now if we wanted to um Hmm. let's see if i wanted to let, let me just display the users one more time here um yeah we can actually use admin too if we wanted to display the groups that a uh, a particular user is a member of we could essentially say get net group and um, i keep typing that incorrectly that is group as opposed to gpo net group and then we can limit it again similar to what we did before so we say username and then i can say admin uh, maybe admin too, right? And I hit enter. And these are the list of groups that um, the user admin too is a member of. So it's part of the domain admins, uh, administrators group, enterprise admins, group policy creator owners. You get the idea. So this can be very, very, very useful uh, in identifying uh, you know, users that are part of specific groups. And furthermore, or consequently, uh, what privileges they will have based on the groups that they're a member of right so that is how to enumerate that information uh, if we wanted to for example um, enumerate information or get the users that are part of the administrator group uh, we could do that for example by saying uh, get um, get net group member yeah i believe that's it so net get net group member and then we specify the group name um, and then we specify the group itself, or rather the group name here, in double quotes. I'll just hit enter. And uh, these are all the users that are part of the. Um, these are all the users that are part of the um, of of the admin group. So, um, you know, there we are. Member name. You can see SQL Service Admin Two, uh, Domain Admins, um, and then of course enterprise admins etc the, and these are of course going to be groups of their own and you know they are part of the admin group because they require administrative privileges right okay cool so we've taken a look at a lot now um let's move on to identifying other computers or other hosts on our active directory environment because uh part of an active directory environment essentially uh, requires as a prerequisite more than one compute otherwise it doesn't make sense having an active directory environment right so um, we can enumerate all the computers on this particular network or within this particular domain by saying get and then we say net computer um, not net compartment but net computer we hit enter and you can see that we have the domain controller uh, we have desktop 2 and desktop 1 right all right, so we know that the, that desktop one and desktop two are a part of this particular domain, controller.local. However, are they online? So how do we check if they're online? Well, we'll get into the advanced techniques in their own video, but for now we can utilize the ping functionality. And so again, if we just say, uh, you know, get net computer, and then I say ping, uh, well, not uh, like that, uh, rather hyphen ping. And I hit enter, you can see that the only uh, computer that's currently online is domain controller, right? Which makes sense because we are currently within a try hack me, um, a try hack me room as opposed to working in a real active directory environment. I'll be making a video that covers the process of setting up your own active directory environment on the cheap because that can be quite complex. 
However, you can see that, um, you know, we don't have any other computers online, but we know what computers are part of this particular domain. So again, if I just get out the computers there, you can see that information uh, there. These are the computers that are part of the domain. If we wanted to get, um, hmm, let's see, uh, information regarding uh, all of the computers uh, within this particular domain, we could again say get a net computer. Um, well, I keep using the tab feature there, but it uh, fails on me, but that's my mistake. Uh, if we say net get net computer, and then we say full data. So full, if we wanted to get the operating system uh, information, we can then say, you know, full data, we hit enter. And now for each of the computers that are part of this domain, we'll get the operating system version um, and all other information pertinent to the Active Directory configuration and environment. So for example, you can see that um, controller uh, dot local, um, or ra rather, sorry, the domain controller, here is running Windows Server 2019 standard. That's the computer we currently have access to. And then uh, the second computer, or rather computer one, is running Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation. Uh, well, that's actually desktop two. And desktop one is running pretty much the same version, which is Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation. Now, if we wanted to, again, limit our results here, if we wanted to only, uh, again, you know, uh, display or output specific information, we could do that by using the select option here. And then we specify uh, maybe the com the common name. And then of course, the operating system, um, the operating system information. So if we hit enter, you can see that uh, the domain controller is running Windows Server 2019 standard, desktop 2, Windows 10, desktop 1, Windows 10. So this it can be very, very useful, uh, again, for obvious reasons in identifying systems or computers uh, within this particular domain. And furthermore, it can help you understand what you're dealing with in regards to vulnerabilities. You know, you, you get the idea. Right, so that is uh, the process of, you know, identifying computers uh, within this current domain. Now, uh, I'm going to be covering more techniques, but for now, let's just stick to that because I still want to cover quite a bit of information. So we've talked about the domain that we're currently worked in, but do we have any information regarding this domain? Well, no. So let's move on to the next step, which is domain um, domain enumeration, right? So we're trying to get as much information as possible from our domain. So to do that, we simply say get net domain. And again, I'll stop using uh, the tab feature here. So I'll just say get net domain. And again, it gives you the forest here, which is, again, it simply tells you it's controller.local. That's the, essentially the domain uh, there. And the, the domain controller is domain controller.controller.local. So the current system we're on is the domain controller. And then of course, you have the RID role owner, which is domain controller, et cetera, et cetera. So that's just basic information regarding uh, this particular domain. If we wanted to get this domain SID, which can be useful, uh, probably will not make much sense now, but in the future it will. So I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll also be referring back to this particular point in time uh, in the future. So get domain SID. Before we take a look at the policy, let's take a look at the SID. This is the SID for this particular domain. If we want to check out the policy, we can do that as well. That's very useful. So again, the registry values are provided there. System access, uh, you can see uh, that these are essentially the policies pertinent to this particular domain. So for example, minimum password age is set to one, maximum password age 42. Again, you get more information regarding this particular domain, right? So you also get information regarding the Kerberos policy. Most of you are, you know, uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with Kerberos and Kerberos tickets, don't worry about that. That'll all be demystified in the future. Right, so that's the domain policy. Uh, if we wanted, again, if we were not able to identify the domain controller, we can also get the domain controller manually or just using another command, say, uh, maybe get, um, get net domain control, I believe. Uh, like so, there we are. So again, you get the, the, the actual uh, domain controller there and um, the operating system version, the roles, etc, etc. We've already got that information before. So uh, we don't need to, again, go through all that information now. Uh, right, so if we wanted to, 
identify, and this comes back to computers that are part of the domain, if we wanted to check and see what computers on the network or within this part uh, within this particular domain we have admin access to we can also do that by saying uh, you know find uh, because we are the domain controller so this is pertinent to us so if you ever compromise a domain controller and you want to find out what computers we can remotely access or we can access uh, with administrative privileges this is a quick way of identifying them so if i say uh, find local admin access i hit enter in this case, because those systems, first and foremost, uh, the other computers on the within this domain are inactive or are offline, they're not going to show up. But in this case, we know that the only uh, computer that we have domain access or local domain access to is the domain controller, right? So we weren't able to find anything there. All right, so I know we've covered quite a lot and don't worry, I'm going to be wrapping up soon, uh, but I still want to cover a few more techniques, right? So. Um, if we want to, uh, again, enumerate local admins, uh, which I think we've done, but uh, we can do this using the invoke, um, invoke enumerate, and I'm going to say local admin, right? So we hit enter, that's going to enumerate the local admins here, and um, they'll just provide them there. So you have the SIDs, the server, right? So for example, uh, let's take a look at the first option here, the administrator. Uh, the enterprise admins, domain admins, admin two. So that's why I've been sticking with the ad, or I've actually been focusing on the user admin two because it looks really interesting, right? And of course, the SQL service, which again might be interesting if we if we are able to exploit uh, the SQL service or the you know SQL rather. So that gives you information regarding the local domain admins, right? Okay, I've uh, spoken very briefly on the policy the um essentially uh, enumerating the domain policy um so again the reason you might uh, you you will want to enumerate uh, policies is primarily because policies will give you an idea of how the domain and the the current system you own has been configured right and that can uh, again give you insight into potential vulnerabilities or misconfigurations right so to do that we can say get and now we can finally say get net gpo we hit enter group policies here and uh, for example i'll show you where this will come in handy is windows defender you can see that the group policy uh that's right over here you can see uh disable windows defender pretty much tells us that windows defender has been disabled and again from that we get a better idea of how our domain controller um has been configured right so um there you are, you have the default domain policy, um, you have the default domain controllers policy, et cetera, et cetera, right? So disable Windows Defender and uh, nothing else apart from that in regards to a potential misconfiguration. So that's just a quick one there. We'll be getting into uh, policies in the future. Um, another important piece of information that I actually want to highlight here is the, uh, the process of enumerating uh, the users that are currently logged on um, so, you know, logons and active sessions. So if we want to identify um, users that are currently logged on to our domain controller, we can do that by saying um, get uh, net logged on, I believe, get net logged on, and then we specify the computer name. And in this case, we know that the computer name is domain controller uh, dot controller dot local, right? We hit enter, and you can see that the only user uh, that's logged in is the administrator. Uh, and again, that can be quite useful, uh, you know, in, in identifying users that are currently logged on, getting an idea of what users frequently log on, etc. Uh, another key piece of information that you might want to enumerate is to identify maybe who last logged on to a particular system. And in our case, we only have access to the domain controller. So instead of saying get net logged on we can say get last logged on so um we hit enter and you can see the last person that logged on was the administrator right so that's fairly simple to understand and of course we're not working within a real active directory environment we're just working on a controller but we do have other computers that are part of the domain right now we do know that the target is running RDP. What if we wanted to identify, you know, uh, if there are any active RDP sessions? Well, we could do that by saying 
Um, again, I'll just use the previous command here. Instead of saying um, get last logged on, we can say maybe, um, hmm, let's see, net uh, RDP session, be it enter. You can see we only have one RDP session, which I'm guessing is uh, primarily done uh, by the actual cloud, or rather is the default configuration or the default method of accessing. As you can see, it's the console access. So uh, because it's not connected to a monitor, the default GUI access is provided via RDP. So if we connect it to the target via RDP, let's actually see whether this will actually uh, replicate here. I'll just get the password there. We know the user is part is administrator. So I'll open up Remina here. That's the RDP client. Let me just type in my password. And uh, we know the target IP is 10, 10, 8, 4, 10, 10, 8, 4. We then log in. And um, yes, we want to accept the certificate. The username is administrator. Uh, password is provided there. That is controller. Hit OK. Uh, we should be able to log in via RDP. Let's see. Hopefully so, because RDP is enabled and it actually does say that we can do that. There we are. So we have RDP access. So again, just give that a few seconds to start up here. All right. So we have uh, RDP access on the target system. So again, to enumerate the RDP sessions, what we can do again is just go back here hit enter and now you can see it correctly tells us hey we have another user who's logged on they have logged on as the user administrator they are currently active uh, they're utilizing um, again the session name is rdp tcp and then of course their source ip which can be very very useful in identifying other computers right and identifying you know various individuals that are connecting either remotely or rather from uh, maybe from another domain you know that can all be very very useful but uh, again the relevance of this will come into play or uh, will become clearer in the future so uh, to wrap up one of the last pieces of information or the last commands that i want to take you through is the process of identifying or finding shares right now shares can be very 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 important when it comes down to exploiting or uh, you know essentially moving your way through or making your way through an active directory environment so if we wanted to find a uh, specific shares or just find shares we can utilize the share finder so we can say invoke uh, share finder hit enter that's going to find all the shares uh, within this domain and you can see the domain all of the shares are from the domain controller uh, we have admin c ipc uh, we have one called share which is interesting and then of course we have net logon right so yeah the Apart from share, everything looks like the default shares that you typically expect. Uh, that being said, let's actually take a look at the Try Hack Me challenges now. So I'm just going to terminate my RDP session there. There we go. That's out of the way. So we can now move on. All right. So let's take a look at the challenges, right? So challenge number one. What is the shared folder that is not set by default? I think we know that. We already got that. Lucky. Yeah, I think it's share, although I might be wrong. Let's try that out. So share. Yeah, that's correct. What operating system is running inside of the network besides Windows Server 2019? I think it's expecting us to provide the operating systems of the other computers in within the domain, which again, we can find really e easily by, uh, again, I'll go through it again with you. So we'll say get net computer, um, not compartment again, uh, get net computer. And then we say um, full data. And uh, we can then limit this to maybe the operating system. Operating system, we hit enter. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, right, I forgot to specify select. There we are. So we know it's Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation. Because you need those Windows licenses, man. All right, so submit. That is correct. I've hidden a flag inside of the users. I think we, we were able to find that that we uh, we can actually just do that by enumerating the user account. So again, get net user. Um, and again, I keep mucking this up. So get net user and then select the uh, common name, hit enter. And the, I think this is the flag here because it has been put in a flag format. So again, uh, the flag also tells us that this is the flag uh, because the name of the account is uh, Power view for the win. 
all right cool so let's see if this is correct and voila that is done so yeah that's pretty much it in regards to performing active directory enumeration with power view as i said the tool is extremely comprehensive and you can take a look at this cheat sheet that they've provided here uh, if you're not familiar with an active directory environment most of them are not going to make sense to you so you know be warned uh this video was uh was, i essentially you know set out to create this video to sort of demystify the process of enumerating relevant information uh you know from an active directory environment with power view and again we'll slowly be uh be making our way into active directory exploitation just so that you guys uh you know are comfortable uh, as i move on that being said in the next video we'll be taking a look at bloodhound and then finally mimikat server manager and then of course persistence uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section um, i would love to you know get your feedback if you have any suggestions or questions you can leave them in the comment section you can hit me up on twitter or you can join in on our discord server we have really awesome conversations there so definitely check that out otherwise that's going to be it for me today uh, thank you very much for watching and i'll be seeing you in the next video a huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, and this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you keep us making even more high-quality content for you guys. So thank you.